want to welcome you back to First Christian Church for our Sunday School lesson this morning. We are continuing our studies in Genesis uh, with the story of Joseph. In fact, we, are, we'll, we will finish Genesis today. Uh, we're going to cover eight chapters, so a lot to go over. And my question uh, to you is, have you ever had a situation where you had an opportunity to take revenge on someone who has done you wrong in some way and uh, that that opportunity presented itself and I'm curious on how you responded. Uh, well, this story today will speak to you if you've been in that situation or, or undoubtedly will be in that situation in the future. So we're still talking about Joseph and remember uh, Joseph, when we last left him, he, you know, he had the gift of being able to interpret dreams and he... Um, had been put in second in command under Pharaoh because he had predicted uh, or interpreted uh, Pharaoh's dream that they were going to have seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And Pharaoh put Joseph in charge to save up during the seven plenty years so that they would have food during famine. Well, as the story starts today, the famine has hit. The seven years of plenty are over. And the famine not only hit Egypt, but it hit uh, Canaan, right, a little bit to the north uh, east of Egypt. And that whole area was really, really bad. And, of course, we know in Canaan, that's where Joseph's brothers and his father Jacob uh, lived. And they began having a, a really hard time. And to the point that uh, the brothers um, and Jacob, Jacob, met with his brothers and says, you're going to, I've heard that down in Egypt they have plenty there, and I want you to go down, uh, ten of you, I don't want Benjamin to go, he's still too young, I want him to stay, I want the ten of you to go down to Egypt and take some money and buy us some grain that they have so that we won't starve to death. So the ten brothers did just that, they uh, headed down to Egypt um, around the Mediterranean coast, it's a pretty good walk. Uh, several days, and they eventually got to uh, Egypt, and it just so happened as they went in uh, to buy the grain, look below and behold, who is there to sell it to them? It's Joseph, and Joseph recognized them immediately as his brothers, but the brothers did not recognize Joseph. Of course, he had his little Pharaoh stuff on, you know, because he was second in command, his robe, and I'm sure... Back then, you know, the, those guys that kind of wore some makeup, whatever, those kind of things. And so they didn't recognize him at all. And they bowed down to him. Um, all of the ten brothers, you know, they got around and bowed down to him because that's what you did to uh, people in Pharaoh's court. And that's interesting because you remember Joseph's dream when he was a boy that uh, the grain stalks would bow down to him, um, his brother, you know, his brothers, so to speak. And guess what's happening now? As the brothers come and buy grain, they're bowing down to Joseph. So that dream came true. And, and remember the stars and gathering around, and, you know, Joseph's star and the sun and the moon. And so, lo and behold, Joseph was, in fact, a prophet through his dreams. And, it, and we know a prophet uh, is a true prophet when his prophecies come true. And sure enough for Joseph, they did. And so, anyway, the brothers are there asking for grain. And Joseph decides, you know what, I remember how they were mean to me. I'm going to have a little fun at their expense. So he says, you know, I think you all are spies in this land. You've come here to spy on us. And I need to put you all in jail. And they're like, no, no, we're not here to be spies. We're, you know, we're here just to buy grain so we won't starve to death. We're, there's 12, you know, we're 12 brothers. Um, you know, our father's Jacob. And, I mean, all, even though two of the brothers aren't here, one was, uh, you know, not sure what happened to him. We sold him to some gypsies that were going to Egypt. Didn't say that, but they were thinking it. And then one was back at home. And so, Joseph said, I tell you what, one of you are going to stay here. I'm going to put one of you in jail, and the other ones are going to go back, and I want you to go get your youngest son, I mean, your youngest brother. Uh, Benjamin, I want you to bring him back, and I'm going to keep Simeon, uh, one of the brothers here in jail, kind of as collateral, just to make sure you come back. And if you do come back with Benjamin, then you all will live. If you don't, then it's not going to be so good for old Simeon here. So the brothers, uh, 
decided, I guess, what choice do we have? You know, we don't want to, uh, Brother Simeon, we don't want him killed. We better go back and get Benjamin. And as they were walking back, they were talking how this was probably punishment for what they had done to Joseph. Even though they did not realize they were talking to Joseph. They were like, we should have never sold him like that. We shouldn't have done him that way. This is our punishment. And so they headed back to Canaan. And uh, they went to their father, Jacob, and said, you know, we've got to take Benjamin back. The, you know, the Pharaoh's chief there has said he's going, they're going to kill Simeon. And, but Jacob really loved Benjamin and didn't want uh, didn't want to let him go, but the brothers, you know, just kept begging and begging, and Jacob's like, well, okay, uh, I'll let him go, I guess, but you got to just promise you're going to bring him back alive, and they're like, we will, we will, so in event, they get Benjamin, and they start heading off to, uh, back to Egypt, and they appear again in front of Joseph, again, once they don't recognize him, Joseph is their brother. They just think he's a pharaoh. He's actually speaking in Egyptian, so there's an interpreter there. So that's another thing that's kind of confused him. And when Joseph sees Benjamin, he's just overwhelmed with emotion. He actually has to leave the room because he starts to cry, and he didn't want those guys to see him crying. And uh, um, and so he says, let's prepare a meal. And so he prepares a meal for him, and they're all sitting there. And he's asking about his father. Is it still alive? Those kind of things. And so he says, well, I'm going to give you some grain and I'm going to send you back. And so he had his servants, Joseph had his servants put the grain in the 10 brothers or 11 brothers uh, sacks. But he had secretly put a uh, Joseph's silver cup in one of the sacks uh, without telling the brothers. And so the next day when he sends them back to Canaan, he sends them on, and then he sends his officers at them after they've taken off, and they catch up to him. And they said, you know, Joseph's silver cup is missing. Did you all steal it? And uh, they're like, no, we didn't. So let's check the sacks and see. And they kept checking them all, and sure enough, they got to Benjamin's sack, and there's the silver cup. And so we're taking him and putting him under arrest, they said. And the brothers were like, no, not Benjamin. <laughs> That's the one our father, you know loves the most we want to make sure he comes back and so they take Benjamin back to jail in Egypt and the brothers go back with them and they meet up with Joseph and implore him please do not put Benjamin in jail do not kill him he he did not know anything about this silver cup please do not hurt him and Judah actually the brother Judah made an impassioned plea uh, for Benjamin's life and it touched Joseph so much that he just the guilt of doing what he was doing, the revenge he was taking out on his brothers, which he should not have done. It was just too much for him. And Joseph finally revealed himself to his brothers and says, I am your brother, Joseph, that you sold uh, uh, to the Ishmaelites who took me to Egypt. And it's like the brothers' eyes were like, you know, light, you know, awoke and, and they're just sitting there going, Oh my gosh, it's our brother. <laughs> and they all gather around, they hug and they cry with one another and um, they're overjoyed. And and they ask him, them, Joseph asked his brothers, I want you to go back and get our father and bring him to us. Uh, you know, the famine's still going strong and will for many more years. Come live here so you will have plenty. So the brothers did in fact go back and... Um, Tell Jacob, guess what? Uh, remember when we told you Joseph got killed by the animal? Well, we might have been exaggerating a little bit. Uh, he's still alive, and he's the second in command in Egypt. And he's kind of a big deal. So, of course, Jacob was overjoyed, and he goes, and the whole family goes back to Egypt, and they go and live in a city named Goshen there in Egypt. And Joseph goes to him, and there's a big family reunion, a lot of tears and hugs and and Pharaoh hears about this, and actually Pharaoh is happy to hear about this because Joseph has brought so much prosperity to Egypt that, uh, um, and he asked to see Jacob, and Jacob comes to Pharaoh, and Jacob actually blesses Pharaoh and um, and says, you know, and Pharaoh sees, you know, knew how well Joseph had done for him, and he asked the brothers to be in charge of his livestock because that's what something they were really good at. And, of course, they agreed to do that. And, of course, Pharaoh's you know, livestock prospered because of that, because God was with this family. And uh, that will ultimately be known as the 12 tribes of Israel. 
And ultimately, Jacob becomes very sick and is going to die. And he talks to his sons, and and then he, he does die. He uh, before he died, he had asked to be buried in the cave in which Abraham and his wife and uh, Isaac and his wife were buried back in Hebron. Right? And uh, remember that cave? I'll show you a picture of it right now, where we know where that is. And uh, so. Joseph and his brothers took Jacob back to Hebron to be buried there in that cave under which over which the building has now been built. And we believe that's where Jacob was in fact buried. And so, but Joseph went back and uh, to help with Pharaoh and rule Egypt and ultimately till, uh, until his death. And Joseph asked one thing before he died. He said, there will come a time in the future where you're called back to this land and when and you're going to be called out back out of the land and when that time comes I want you to take my bones uh, with you um, to be buried in Canaan I don't want them left here in Egypt and so they made that promise and that promise will become uh, very important later um, but a lot of Canaanite you know a lot of the Jewish uh, people at this point in time they you know Jacob's family and the sons um they became known the uh, as the Hyksos people uh, down in Egypt. That's what the Egyptians called them because they came so plenty down there. Um, so the Hyksos is a name you're going to become familiar with and very familiar with in history. So um, keep that in mind. And essentially that Joseph passes away and we are now all the way through Genesis. We've gone all the way through all 50 chapters. We've covered over 2,000 years of history in this one book. The rest of the Bible is probably only 1,000 years of history, and yet Genesis is more than double that. Uh, so you've covered a really large period of time in these classes, uh, which is really interesting. And next week, we will start with the second week, book of the Bible, uh, Exodus and learn about Moses and the dramatic stories there. So I hope you'll come back to hear that. Going to our workbook, we are up to page 120. We're learning how to read portions of a verse of a Bible and how to identify those portions. And I want you to work up through page 123. Uh, and so that's only four pages if you'll work on those and that'll get you to learn to use your Bible um, a little better. There's our little, little Bible, and of course, here's our workbook, finding the way, through, finding your way through the Bible. So hopefully, you have that. If you don't, and you're not up to 120, that's fine. Just work at your own pace. Um, you can call Ann Bruce at the church, and she can get you that workbook. It's a great way to get to use to learn to use the Bible. So hopefully, you'll do that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed these studies of Genesis, and just come back with us next week. I uh, hope you have a wonderful week. And God bless.